welcome to space. We trust satellite navigation systems to guide us on the route, politely announcing the turns to make until we reach our destination. But the full potential of such systems is much broader. As we'll see here at the Danish Air Ambulance Base in Bilund, satellite navigation can be a true lifesaver in the sky. <laughs> An alarm sounds, an action call for the air ambulance crew. Somebody in the area needs to be airlifted to hospital as quickly as possible. The crew remain calm, but they waste not a second of time. Their air ambulance has just five minutes to take off, even if the weather conditions aren't perfect. As we are in Denmark, bad weather is, uh, is a big issue. We have a lot of rainy days, a lot of uh, days with uh, fog and mists and, and low clouds. This service, operated by the Norwegian Air Ambulance in Denmark, is the first to use a new European satellite system that makes it safer to fly in low visibility. Before, around 10% of missions had to be cancelled due to bad weather. That's 300 incidents a year in Denmark alone. If we didn't have a satellite signal, we, we weren't able to, uh, to bring the patient to the hospital and therefore the patient wouldn't get the right, the right treatment. For the person who, who, has, um, who gets the pre-hospital care and, and are flown to the hospital, uh, it, it's a matter of life and death. The EGNUS satellite service provides accurate positioning, vertical as well as horizontal, so a pilot can rely less on visual clues and more on the instruments. That makes it less of a problem if the ground is obscured by fog or clouds. Now with the new EGNUS uh, system, we, uh, which is uh, much more accurate than the, uh, than the normal GPS uh, system, and we're able to uh, get uh, closer to the ground and uh, be able to fly in, uh, in weather that is uh, with lower clouds or low visibility than we are used to. EGNUS is based on geostationary satellites and a network of ground stations that constantly correct the GPS signals, which on their own can miss a user's position by as much as five meters. The corrections are then relayed in real time to the EGNUS receivers in helicopters, planes or other vehicles. What we have here is we have a, a Garmin GPS which is able to uh, receive the EGNUS, uh, the EGNUS channel as well. So what we can do is that we can load a procedure to the uh, Hospital in uh, Aarhus. We see here we have the Agnes channel shown down here. Uh, after that's loaded and confirmed, we can make the autopilot fly the whole uh, GPS approach, and uh, that gives us the ability to come from a high altitude in the clouds and down to a uh, surface. EGNUS positioning data is free to use for anyone equipped with the receiver. Pilots just need the approach procedures for various landing spots, which are developed by air traffic authorities and stored in the onboard computers. Of course, there are costs involved in establishing the, the, the procedures, but as far as I'm concerned, we don't have any cost associated with using EGNUS. Passenger planes can take advantage of this satellite system to safely land at airports not equipped with ILS, the instrument landing system which uses costly radio-based equipment on the ground. What's interesting with satellite navigation and with EGNUS is it can replace some means of approach needed at airports. So we can make savings at airports in terms of local infrastructure. EGNUS is a joint project of the European Space Agency, the European Commission and the Eurocontrol Agency that tests air traffic innovations at this centre. How could this type of satellite navigation ultimately make travel easier for regular passengers? EGNUS can provide a more efficient service than we had in the past, including improving access to certain airports in adverse weather conditions. So, better punctuality, fewer delays, less diversions to alternative airports. So far, less than 10% of all flight crews in Europe say they're set up to use EGNUS. The Swiss Air Rescue Service has equipped all its copters with the new technology and trains all its pilots to use it, anticipating a nationwide adoption of EGNUS. 
we need that accuracy because of the terrain. We're getting very close to the to the mountains, and that's why we need a, a very accurate satellite system, and also not only an accurate, but also a reliable. In Switzerland, hospitals are to be made accessible for Agnes guided approaches. Victims of skiing accidents, for example, will be able to get help quickly, even if there's thick cloud, like in this simulation. We did a lot of test flights. We have installed, we have a collaboration with the Swiss Air Force, and we have installed in several helicopters from the from Rega and from the Swiss Air Force a tool that was calculating the precision and the reliability of the, of the GFS and the EGNO system. And that's for our purpose, it's, it's accurate and reliable enough. EGNOS, Europe's first endeavor in satellite navigation, can be used alongside GPS and also alongside Galileo, Europe's global positioning system. EGNOS complements GPS and also complements Galileo, providing an additional boost to these systems. It's able to correct their signals and improve their performance. Taking off in any weather, precise satellite navigation can give pilots better vision to save people in distress. GPS, it's uh, all going to be more beneficial for everyone in the end, also for the patients. And, uh, that's what we're here for, to help as many people as possible. And now to our regular update on ExoMars. The spacecraft is traveling to Mars right now on a mission to search for signs of life. When it gets there in October, it will send a small test probe to make Europe's first ever controlled landing on the Red Planet. Vincenzo Giorgio, a key engineer behind this project, explains how it's done in this month's episode of Destination Mars. Coming towards Mars at a speed of 26,000 kilometers per hour, we encounter the atmosphere of the planet. The system heats up. We're landing while braking. We keep braking until we slow down to 2,500 kilometers per hour, at which moment we deploy the parachute. The parachute helps us slow down further, but at a certain moment, we turn on the radars. We know how far we are from the surface, so we deploy our platform. Our platforms start to stabilize autonomously thanks to the nine engines, with retro rockets working until it reaches the ground. This is the moment we turn off all the engines and land. We are now on Mars. That's all for now. Next month, we are looking at the latest experiments in space life support systems, including how to grow food in orbit. See you then.